It's Monday, July 1st, here at Three Nerds in a Basement. I'm your host, Vince, and I'm always joined by... Blavin. Anthony. Happy Canada Day! Happy Canada Day! Happy Canada Day! It is the summer here up in the Great White North. Mm -hmm. Celebrating the birth of our Queen, George Washington. That's right. All the way back from the (laughs) 1700s. 1700s? I'm pretty sure, right? That's when we came into Confederation? You, 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 got, you talked like I paid attention in school. Oh. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, That's where we were all wrong. <laughs> Whatever. Um, the pilgrim settled, right? Yes. <laughs> this week, the thing we're looking at is something different. We built a, a trio of model kits, and we'll tell you about that a little experience. Trifecta. We've got a couple more SDC announcements. Uh, uh-huh. some, some American uh, hit sensations come to Canada. And because Anthony has been away for a week, we get to figure out what he's been doing since he got his eyes changed. Yay. <laughs> uh, if you always want to get in touch with us, you can write into us at tniab.letters at gmail.com. And you can find us on the web at typev3.podme.com, as well as Facebook and Twitter and all the other social media outlets. And my personal email is hot underscore Asian 999 Oh, I thought it wasn't uh, hot young underscore Subaru Toyota XXX. Oh, that one too. <laughs> that was my Angel Fire account. No, oh, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, a little disclaimer for this week's episode, because we are talking about model kits, and I have, to, and I am also talking about toys, expect a lot of clicks and ratchets to go on in the background. Yes, that is a surprise <laughs> toy we're playing with right now. Yo. Uh, okay, let us get into the show. Yes. So this week, uh, or two weeks ago on a pre-show, if you watched, we got some LBX kits, some Dan Balsecki model kits in the mail. Mm-hmm. And this week we decided to build them all together. As very group, quickly. Like as that. a group. And it was a very quick build. And I think what we're going to talk about today is the build itself and what we feel about the final product. And mm-hmm. Basically reviewing a, a Bandai model kit. Seto. There we go. So, Blaine, why don't, you, why don't you kick this one off? Yeah, so the one I picked was Nightmare, which is actually the second LBX of one of the supporting characters who is a magician. And uh, yeah, I was really one of the big things that I look for in model kits when I build them is how they look like when they're not painted. Yeah. You know, after like you know when they come out uh, after you just put on the stickers and stuff because I don't I'm really a big painter like on my kits and stuff, right? Yeah. So I'm p- pleased to report that oh I, mine and everybody else's look really nice even without any paint. Yeah. Like the kit itself really looks good once you bring it out of the. Uh, make it out of the box. And um, the cape that mine had actually is a cutout from the instruction manual. So it's a paper cape. Mm-hmm. Which I, I thought it was a really nice touch. But I guess some people will be, you know, want to keep their manuals in pristine so that might turn a couple of people off. Uh, from the research I've done, everybody wants to keep their manuals pristine. Right? Yeah, no one cuts out the cape. Yeah. What? Well, yes. my did. So did I. <laughs> yeah. And um, It's a cape. Another thing too is what I thought was really cool is that the runners that they had, the... Uh, the, I guess the frames yeah. for the for all the pieces, parts of them come off that say you know what is what you know this this frame right here is used for the legs or whatnot, and which really makes it so that like you can rip out only the parts for the f- hands or need. the section that you need the foot the hands and you can build them piece by piece like without having to you know toggle with all all the parts at once you know what I mean because back in the old days when you used to build model kits. You know, you had four big frames and you had to keep finding your part in each one of them. But this one, you can rip off the arm frames and then have all the arm frames in front of you. And those are the only pieces that you're going to be using. Mm. And afterwards, once this is done, because the frames have a little, I guess, rectangle on them that tells you what part they're for, like the arm, the leg, or whatever, you can pe- take those off, those indicators, and make a big dice out of it that you can play a game with. Yeah. Which I thought was really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'm really pleased with this kit. I think it's a lot of fun to build. It's very simple. Yeah. And I think they made a really good choice with the whole indicator thing to tell you, you know, what like what part these what parts this this for this is for what limb, right? Yeah. But I don't know if that's a new thing that's happening right now or is that just just for this. You yeah, know, I don't it? know if that's going on with Cuz I know you built one recently a Zeta, so I don't know if it had that feature as well. No, they're kind of just they're all uh, cast together. So is this because you think that it's aimed at kids? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? As an adult, I can really appreciate that. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. insane. Yeah. Yeah, like, this thing seems like it did a lot of 
things right because yeah. it's kind of model kits. I'm mm-hmm. really for the price point as well. Yeah, I think it's a really good kit. Eight dollars. Yeah, these are these cost us seven hundred about seven hundred yen each. Yeah. Uh, plus shipping, so so I definitely will buy another one if it comes out here. Yeah, okay. yeah. definitely. Anyway, yeah, that's me. Yeah, cool. And Anthony, how do you feel about this uh, this model kit building session? Uh, it was fun. There's a lot different. Like it was, it was a lot different from Gundam building mm-hmm. because because it isn't those four big runners, and then you just gotta keep searching for the parts. Like they do make it very easy. Mm-hmm. And also, I think they came out really good, especially considering their one to one scale with the show. <laughs> yeah, like none of this one one forty four bullshit. Yeah, like. Th- th- to be fair. Yeah, to be fair, they are tiny, but... <laughs> well, they're five and, like, five inches tall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, no, they look really good. Like, even on your on your Zen and, like, the, yeah. the nice little chrome on his hammer yeah. and, like, that kind of stuff. And there's just a lot of attention to detail. And, like, the way when, when parts fit together, like, I constantly found myself being like, oh, that's really clever how they would get these parts. Like, mm-hmm. like I think yours was the only one with eye stickers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like mine didn't have an eye sticker. It had like a little red piece and then it went inside the head and it looked really cool. Yeah. <sighs> Shit, I didn't notice how nice yours looks. Yeah. Shit, it's awesome. It looks sturdy. Yeah. And yeah, like, again, for $8, even on an import, like plus shipping, Yeah. like, it's fantastic quality. Like, it's really mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I really liked it. I really like how my, uh, what is it? I got... Hunter. 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 Yeah, he's like one of the... The main character sidekicks. Yeah. And uh, he's pretty much Sniper Wolf, so... Yeah, he pretty much is. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I like how he has the... He has a scar over one eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I, yeah. I really enjoyed building it, and, like, again, for the price point, like, I, yeah. I kind of want to buy another one. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Yeah, uh, yeah, like you guys know, I, for a while, I've been looking for a model kit to, to delve into, and, uh, wow, thanks. You just gave my... <laughs> <laughs> Twisted around. Right. Yeah. Anyway, give me a uh, little tailbone. Yeah, no, yeah, no. So I've been wanting to find a model kit, and I just uh, I've been having trouble deciding where to go. And I think this is like this is like the perfect combination of what I'm looking for. It's for reals, huh? Yeah, no, like it's. I love the building. It was so easy to understand, right? And I love how the runners you could cut out into certain sections. <laughs> that's that's the, that's awesome. It's like you're building the arms. Only use this section of the entire runner. You could just, and then you're done. Yeah. Um. There are a lot of stickers, and the stickers are pretty... Some of them can get really difficult and nightmarish. But, uh, you know, uh, yeah, it was super simple to do. Uh, and there was enough complexity with the, like, actually putting it together that I never felt like it was, a uh, like, super childish. And, and, yeah, I liked how it turned out. For an unpainted kit, I the stickers do a surprisingly well job of making it look more detailed than it actually is. Yeah, it's the I'm, same. Yeah, I'm sure like if I had a Gundam marker, there are things that I'd want to go in and, and panel line or or if I had a paintbrush and maybe just give it like a black wash to make it look a little more weathered. Yeah, like on my on my hunter, like he has a sticker for his white stripe on his tail. Yeah. It's like it kinda looks crappy with the tail yeah. or with the sticker because you gotta like twist it around yeah. and it gets all crinkled. Yeah. And like that would look better with paint. Mm-hmm. But from afar, like it looks yeah. totally fine. Yeah, like the one thing I'd want is like I like the weapon on mine is like this giant yellow mace with chromed edges and I'd wanna like paint it, like give it a weather texture just to make it look like maybe just dry brush it so that it looks a little more Would you give it your own custom paint scheme? Like no. make it red. No. I like I, I I love uh black and purple. <laughs> So like and and mine looks like Cecil in his Dark Knight stage from Final Fantasy. Kind of does. So, I really like the way it turned out, and like, it, it's one of those things that like if you're making a big order from like a, a Japanese toy site, and you've got like you want to pad out the shipping, like oh, like you do, you feel like paying twenty five bucks for like one toy is like too expensive. I feel like this is the perfect thing to throw in to just like even out the shipping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like if you really wanted a kit to build, this is. Easy enough that it doesn't take so much of your time. Yeah, and no, it comes it took, out really well. It took us like what, like two hours. I and two, I've never built yeah, that two, fast. Two three hours, yeah. Actually, yeah. like, yeah. I was trying to race you guys, <laughs> and it turned out really well, actually. And I didn't feel like me rushing really made it suffer. Made the co- made the quality suffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's the gimmick too, where you can swap the parts. Yeah. So <laughs> the nice thing we were talking about is that. Each of your parts, your arms, your legs, your weapon has a different value on the dice roll. And if you swap parts with each other, because 
I guess there's cross compatibility between between all LBXs. Mm. You could swap out dice parts, dice like panels as well. So if Vince gave me his weapon, my weapon would be replaced with his, and it will have a different point value. Yeah, which is really cool. And we tried to make crazy combinations, but they all just look ugly together. Yeah, I feel it's like weird. <laughs> we well, should... it's like when they mix and match metabots. Like it looks like shit. Yeah, next if I buy another kit, I'm gonna make sure it complements this one so that I can mix and match the combo. Yeah. Or I might just buy one that has cool weapons so I can get rid of this mace. Yo, I'll give you my wolf tail and then you give me your tail. <laughs> your demon tail for... Yeah. Just swap out the, the feet. Yeah. yeah. That's hilarious. But yeah, no, this is uh, pretty enjoyable. I will say the figure, uh, looking at it, like if I had to judge it objectively, there are things that like I wish it had a bit more of. Mm -hmm. Like this knee joint. I wish you could bend it a bit further. Okay. Uh, same with the elbows. But yeah. I don't... Like I can't really complain too much because it's seven bucks. Right. And, like, if I were to go to the store right now and, like, pay seven bucks for something at Toys R Us, like, I'm not going to get anything as close as nice as to this, so... Right on. Like, yeah, like, I really love it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty sick. Too. Yours is, I think, the sturdiest out of all of ours. Like, Anthony's head falls off. My feet don't even stand. Yeah, the, those yeah, are... Yeah, because you come with it. Yours comes with the stand. Yeah, mine actually... Yours comes with the display stand. Yeah, what's the deal with that? Some of them don't come with stands, and but mine did, because I, I think they... Wanted to address the issue that it can't stand on its own. Oh, because it's stilettos. Doesn't it always fly in the show or float? Mm, kinda, oh, but he has okay. but he has stilettos, so I guess I don't blame him. Yeah, you know there are things like loose ball joints and stuff, but you, you guys could always thicken those up if you want to make it a tighter connection. How'd you do that? Uh, I have this thing called feature floor polish, and you basically just like stick the ball joint in there. Oh, weird. Or you just paint a little bit around, and then you let it dry, let it thicken, and then you put it into the socket and just twist it. Weird. And it just gets thicker. Wow. And then if something's too tight, I also have the reverse <coughs> effect where you put it in and it loosens it. But I don't think there's anything that's too tight here. <laughs> that's what she said. Ha! 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 That was leading. Okay, so yeah, it sounds like it's a, this was a, a success between the three of us. Yep, yep. And uh, yeah, I totally, I definitely recommend it. Like, even if you're not into like toys or model kits, it's something that like I feel is cheap enough to just try out. Yep. And you could be like, oh, that was different. And then Time to buy a perfect gray. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing, right? It makes you feel like, yo, I could do this all day. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> but yeah. No, no. Good stuff. Uh, I don't it know. seems good. Yeah. It seems good. Is there anything to uh, conclude on with this? Or? Um, no, I think that it, yeah, if you were looking for a model kit to build, this would be a good one. Honestly, I like this better than my, my Gundam high grades that I have. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. And those are those are 20 each. Yeah. And this is eight bucks. Yeah. It is... Really surprising how cheap these are. Yeah. 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 And, but that's the key. Don't go for like... Because there's a second stage shoe. It's called Hyperfunction LBX. Where they're like more priced. than like 11, 12. No, no, no. Hyperfunctions are like 20 bucks. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, yeah. And those are more in line with like high grade Gundams. Interesting. But it's like that defeats the purpose. Yeah. <laughs> like the reason you're getting these is because they're cheap. Even the eleven dollar ones seem like a pretty big step up. Yeah, and I think the only reason they are eleven bucks is because they're just there's more plastic. Yeah, there's tons of weapons. Yeah, there's like more stuff in, and I think you can get like accessory packs and. Yeah. Yeah. I think the next one I'm gonna get if I were to get is the two that turn into each other's swords. Oh yeah. The two main characters, yeah, yeah. 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 pretty cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. I think I would go for Lucifer or. Uh, uh, Dark Achilles. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's the dude with the giant spike sword? Oh, Hakayo. Hakayo. Yeah, Hakayo. I get him. Yeah. 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 But yeah, no. Go check out LBX kits. Uh, check out the video on the site of us completing the build if you want to see what this actually looks like or what our what our, our kits look like. So, yeah. Pretty cool. Yep, yep. So from here, let's go into our picks of the week. Um, and I'll start this one off because mine's pretty simple. All right. Pretty simple. So Vin Diesel has, I think, like 42 million Facebook friends. That's it? I think so. Only? Yeah. I got like, I got that many. That's for, yeah, I have stuff in there for later. But, anyways, he posted on his Facebook that... Are he, you one of his friends? No. <laughs> I saw the article on IGN, but it's like, he's like, Marvel called me and they want to meet with me. Wow. And he's like, I have no idea what this is for. You guys probably know more than I do. So, there is no news behind it, but it is speculation. Vin Diesel will probably play a character in one of the Marvel movies, but who will he be? Who's bald and huge? So there's a lot of... Mr. Clean. <laughs> He's not a Marvel character. <laughs> He's now. So the the leading suspicion is that he will be Thanatos. Or Thanos. Really? Yeah. That is the leading suspicion. That's the... Oh, wow. 
Yeah. Hmm. So with a lot of makeup, a lot of gear, could he be the big... The big blue baddie? Yeah. Wow. Uh, Purple. Purple baddie? Yeah. I was thinking, who's the guy... Is his name Atomic Man? No. What? Absorbing Man. Absorbing Man from the Wrecking Crew? I think so. But okay. then I'm like, yo, the, wait, wait, Who wait, has the... Nobody yeah. cares about the... Yeah. Well, the Wrecking Crew is cool, but like, yeah, I don't think... I don't know what that is. So then the other thing I thought... <laughs> Or the the second leading opinion was was Submariner. What? Yeah, and there I was like, ah, he doesn't look like Namor. I don't know. I mean, yeah, Namor looks more like Asian Oriental. Yeah, kind of right. So I Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, he's the new Xavier. He just gets up. That would blow my mind. It's just driving. Yeah, <laughs> that would blow my mind. And. Yeah, so I have no ideas. You guys have any suspicions here? Like, I have no... I'm sticking with Xavier. Because you imagine that? Yo, Paul Walker's like... Yeah. Like, you know, another telepath. And he's like, yo, he's in my head. I'm in your head. <laughs> he's Kingpin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shit. He's yo, Kingpin. Kingpin. Oh, man. That, w- that would make sense if he was Kingpin in... I don't know. What do you think? Like a Spider-Man movie? Yeah. Daredevil. <laughs> Reboot Daredevil. Let's see how that goes. What if he is Daredevil? <laughs> He already plays a blind guy in, uh, in Pitch Black. Like, come on. It's not blind. I thought he was blind. No, he just can see in the dark. Uh, they shined his eyes. Yeah. Um, yeah, weird. Um, weird, right? Uh, bald characters? I don't even know anymore. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because the other thing is like, well... That well leave, they put a wig on him. That kind of leaves like The Rock as the only person left they have to ask to do the Marvel movie, right? And The Rock is pretty easy. Yo. What if The Rock is just Luke Cage? True. The Rock is just... What? They gave him an afro? And then just let him go? Have you seen the mock-ups for The Rock as being Luke Cage in a Marvel movie? No. Did it look good? It looks awesome. Really? Like, it. it they posted on April Fool's this year. Yeah. It's just like, he has a yellow shirt. Yeah. And he's like, holy shit, he's Luke Cage. And then everybody's like, well, Vin Diesel can't be Iron Fist. No. No, that can't be it. Danny Rand is a blonde hair, blue-eyed, <laughs> thin kung fu fighter. No, I don't think so. Yeah. So yeah, no, that's really it. Like, I'm looking forward to see where he'll show up in the Marvel movie because there's no way he's gonna turn the, the, uh, a Marvel part down. I mean, everybody wants to get in those movies now. Yeah, man, with their popularity. Apparently not uh, the Hulk, the guy who played the Hulk before the new guy. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, he's a he's an actor. He's an actor. He's an actor. actor. <laughs> yeah, but nothing is beyond uh, what's his name? The the guy who Dave, was it something Ruff, Ruffalo? Mark Ruffalo. Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, no, Mark man. Ruffalo's good. Yeah, he's, he's good actor. He's good times. He's good. He's good. Yeah. He's not good as the Hulk. He's good as Bruce, but yeah. Yeah. Well, he doesn't play the Hulk. Like. What are you talking about? He's behind the fucking voice thing going... Yeah. Hilarious, guys. Yeah. Hilarious. There you go. Um... Well, even what's your pick this week? My pick is really simple. It's San Diego Comic Con. Another announcement is that... Oh, good. They're going to be releasing... The five plane walker, uh, planeswalkers from Magic 2014, but the card art is black on black. So yeah, I looked these up just before we recorded, and they look they look nice. Well, there's only one, the the green one. Yeah, but, like, sh- snap, they look so good. It's just like it's it's black. It's like a monochrome. It, no, it's, it's all like a, black, but it's yeah. different shades of black. It's a grayscale. Yeah, it's, it's grayscale. mostly black. Yeah, it looks amazing, and then. I guess his weapon was green. It's like it's neon green. Yeah. So I guess everybody's signature thing is going to be their colors. Yeah. But I don't know how they're going to do the black one because she's already black. What if <laughs> the first is just white on white and oh. her weapon is black? Ooh. Ooh. Well, they haven't released any more, right? So yeah. so this is going to be a hot seller. Yeah, they look cool. For quite a bit. Yeah. Because they're coming in like a collector's box and stuff. Yeah. And it's only going to be sold there. Yeah. But these cards are like... Like, the, the actual properties of these cards are no different from the regular No, movie. no, no, no. It's just when you whip them out and turn them, it's like, man. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> like, that that sounds like me. <laughs> oh man. It's like, your deck's terrible. <laughs> but this card... <laughs> this damn! So good. <laughs> Did you run all five planeswalkers? Like, five color? Yeah, 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 yo. I just want to show you how poo you are. Yeah. Oh, God. It's good times. These good cards times. are cool. No, and speaking of SDCC... They showed off another announcement. So yeah. last week I was talking about Power Rangers toys, right? Yeah. And remember I said the Legacy Morph you could buy Toys R Us? Yeah. So they showed off the San Diego Comic Con one. Yeah. It's fucking Green Ranger. What? And it's 24K gold. What? It's That's gold it? plated. What? And if there's only going to be a thousand of them. What? And it's like, Bandai, fuck you. Like if there was only one more for every kid in the world wanted, it was the Green Rangers. Only a thousand. And it's man. fucking uh, an SDCC exclusive. So. And it's gold. 
Yeah. So only a thousand man childs. Yeah. Will have. That's gonna. <laughs> Because I know, because I, I know it's gonna retail at, at probably the con for like two hundred bucks. But then you want it's gonna be like five hundred if you bought it from a middleman. Yeah, just tell your mom you want to invest in gold. <laughs> <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally. I, th- I also think his coin is like uh, gold plated too. He comes with the the Green Ranger and the White Ranger coin. Oh man! So, so I can just see basically White Tiger. <laughs> Fuck that man! Dragon Sword. He did you say Dragon Sword? Yeah, he's a Dragon Sword. That's. What do you think he would say? Dragon Caesar? No, he says Dragon Zord. No, I just say dragon. But no. Dragon Zord. Dragon Zord. You don't see me going... Tyrannosaurus. You don't see me saying Tyrannosaurus Zord. Tyrannosaurus. You should. You should start saying... Yeah, right. But yeah, no. SDCC. Just... Wow, we gotta go one day. One day. One of these years. One of these years. We're gonna go. Alright, but uh, Anthony, round out this section. Everybody knows about Kickstarter, right? No. No? Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> Kickstarter is this great new hip thing that all the kids are doing. Is it hip? Is I think so. Hip, the hop, the hippity hip. Okay, you're old now. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so what happened is so Kickstarter, if for I guess people who don't know, is uh, is a site where you can put up a project or an idea, and you can have it crowdfunded. Crowdfunded. So if people like your idea, they can give you money, and if you reach this goal, Kickstarter will give you that money with a fifteen percent like fee. Mm-hmm. That's how they make their money, and then they can, people can say goals and like it's 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 super popular. And you obviously have to give back to your people who pledge to you. Yeah, yeah. You you have like you have like set goals, and then it's like okay, if you pledge X amount of money, you get this, or yeah. and, it, and it keeps going in tiers. Yeah. So uh, Canada has one called Indiegogo, but now they might be in trouble because Kickstarter is planning to launch in Canada in it- the summer. So wow. and Kickstarter is a brand name. Kickstarter is the Walmart. Of, <laughs> of crowdsource funding. So basically, if you're in Canada and you've been using Indiegogo for a long time, even though there's no such thing as customer loyalty, think no, Anthony? no, I don't think so. I think it's gonna be like mine's on Kickstarter. It's like whoa, Kickstarter, real shit. <laughs> and then, and then it's like mine's on Indiegogo. It's not Kickstarter. Fuck off. And then, I think it's gonna happen. But like, it's yeah. gonna be, it's gonna. It's going to be hard for those Canadian companies to like deal with such a That's big That's true, but the Canadian company still has some benefits versus Kickstarter. Like, true. if you don't make your goal, you still keep the money. Really? Yeah, that, oh. that's the key to Indiegogo. Mm, that's uh. that's the PlayStation 4 Xbox drop of crowdsource yeah. funding. Yeah, that's... Hot. Again, a lot of people don't know that, but yeah, that's how it works. I, I didn't know that when researching this story. Yeah, but that's also kind of dumb, though, right? Because if you don't make your thing, then you have no guarantee that you're going to... Yeah, you still get the money, but then it's like, well, like, we didn't make the goal. So I just now, got now, $2,000. Yeah, now I, so that's also kind of evil. And it's like, well, do you want to support something like that? Yes. It's like, well, damn you Canadians. Making this evil Indiegogo. Yeah, Canada's <laughs> the one that's going to make evil <laughs> things. See, so I turned it around. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's... It's cool. I can't wait to see more Canadian crowdfunding uh, things. Yeah, as of this moment, have you guys kickstarted anything? Uh, I almost kickstarted this uh, MMO card game, mm. but I didn't. Oh, you mean like start our own projects? You mean not start? No, I mean fun. like you just pay five just bucks. Fun. So. Yeah, have you? Yeah. yeah, this this card game called Shift. It's Is this like the one? The one card game. Yeah, the one card for. Card. Yeah, it's hard to say. A single card TCG. Okay. There you go. Wow! Did you? Oh, you didn't. You didn't do that online MMO RPG. No, I didn't do it. Wow, me neither. Uh, yeah. Me neither. I only did two hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Oh no, my I'm god! I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But yeah, my modern masters fund. No one put in money for. This is really selfish. <laughs> it's like, give me two hundred fifty dollars. I'll buy one. Give me two hundred dollars. I'll buy two. That's it. What do I get? Nothing. Nothing. I'll stream me opening these packs and not even that. Money. <laughs> I'm just gonna play with them. Yeah, I'll send you yeah. pictures. <laughs> Give your address. Send you a postcard. Pick mm. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's it. That's it. That's all there is. Well, Kickstarter's coming to Canada. Yeah. Another place to sink our money into. Boom, boom. There we go. Got too much Did money. We... <laughs> all right. Well, we'll. Uh, how about we move into our weeks? And. Anthony, you've been away for two weeks, so I'm right. sure the audience is anxious to hear what you've been up to. I bet they're not. <laughs> there you go right <laughs> okay so okay let's, so I was away for two weeks because or over a week 
because I had laser eye surgery. Lasers. So I got lasers. With a Z? Lasers with a Z? Z -Z 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 Yeah. So I had lasers put into my eyes, and now I can see. And it's... I want to talk about the the process of doing it. Because, like, honestly, I was pretty nervous. Like, I thought I was going to be, like, totally fucked over. So what happens is that they put a... First off, to even be eligible for it, you have to have, like, a, a certain thickness on your eye like mm-hmm. it's like this uh part of your eye that covers your iris and has to be thick enough yeah so the laser just doesn't fucking burn through your eyeball hot literally so uh they put these f- cool freezing drops in your eyes so think of like when the dentist like freezes your mouth yes but it's on your eyes so the the lady will like start poking your eye with shit and it, your eye will go blurry when she pokes it yeah but you don't feel anything it, oh, it's super cool. So it's just like you see the thing get really close to you, then it goes blurry, and then it goes away from you and it gets clear again. That's nice. Yeah, and it's like just pokes your eye, and then what, if that's fine, they put those freezing drops in again, and then you go on onto the, you go onto the table, and it's this big machine, and uh, all they tell you to do is look at the light because they put a clamp on your eye. Oh, uh, that's just like oh, inside, I can't even think so about that, that it holds it open, right? And it's like it's like really wide. Yeah, I can't even so, think yeah. about that. So you can't blink. And then they tell you to look at the red dot. And, yeah. what, and what they don't tell you is that the red dot is the laser. So what happens is that they used to they cut open your eye with the laser. Okay? <gasps> and you just hear all you don't hear it like it's just and you don't feel anything because of the freezing drops. Of course, of course. Is there is there a do you smell something? I didn't smell anything. Okay. My dad said when he went, it smelled like uh, burnt chicken. I was gonna say, like, does it smell like bacon? Like <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, delicious. So, so, uh, so he was, so you get, it cuts, a, a across your eye and you always have to be looking at it. And then the next thing you'll see, because well, you're looking up at the laser is you'll see a pair of like tong looking things. Oh. They're not like tongs. They look more like, uh, I guess like tweezers. Oh. And what he does or what the doctor does is that it grabs the lids that it cut and it pulls them back oh. so that it can expose your eye and that's really cool because as soon as he pulls them black, yeah. you go blind. Wow. Yeah. So like as soon as he pulls so pulled it back, right? Uh, it was like one and it was like really shitty and then two and then it was all black. Okay. And I couldn't see anything because your other eye is covered. Okay. And I was just blind. Like I was literally blind. Did you go into a panic state? No, but it's cool. <laughs> okay. Like it's kind of looked like you're staring up at like the clearest night sky. Yeah. Like and there's like a bunch of like little like light weird because it's still registering light. A bit, but you can't see anything. So it's like you see little like dots okay, and stuff. Okay. And then you hear more noises, and because at that point you can't see, so I can't tell you to look at anything. Yeah. So you you just hear a bunch of noises, and then you get moved back to the other machine, and then one flap, bam, vision again. Oh. Two, and you can see, and so you do. They do that with both eyes, and as soon as you're done, as soon as they do both eyes, you get up from the table, twenty twenty vision. Amazing. Like, there's, there was, like, almost no healing process. Amazing. It's kind of crazy. Man, technology today. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I had to do was take these, like, antibacterial drops to make sure my eye is always clean. So that oh, it, so they'll get infected. Yeah, so it doesn't get infected, right? And so that it's all, like, it oh, heals properly. Man, an infected eye. That's just, yeah, like, the sight of that. I, oh. I learned that there's this, uh, there's a certain, like, herpes simplex that forms on your eye. Oh. Kinda yeah, hot. so you can get, like, cold sores on your eyes and shit. Kind of hot. Is that like transferable to others? I don't know. Oh, okay. But like what happened is that the lady, like on the on the piece of paper, it said, do you have like herpes simplex? And I was like, oh, cold sores? Yes. And then they're like, holy shit, are you sure you have this? This is totally <laughs> dangerous. And not many people have it. I was like, what, cold sores? They're like, no, no, okay, thank God. <laughs> And the way to set them in a panic mode. <laughs> yeah, they like that place is on lockdown. Yeah, they were they were like we've in the twenty years I've been here, I've only seen this once. Are you sure you have it? I was like, what is it? <laughs> That's hilarious. I love that. You don't know what it is. You don't ask. You're like, sure, sure why not? Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, she, she was like, yeah, that is literally the most worrying thing you could have checked the ass to. Shit. <laughs> it's like you're that guy in the thing. It's like, do you have a criminal record? I'm a smooth criminal. Yes. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's an, it an honest mistake. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, it was it was crazy. Like as soon as soon as I got up, 
I could see perfectly. That's amazing. Your eyes are super sensitive for uh, for like the first couple days. <laughs> so you have to wear these like big ass black sunglasses that even cover the sides. Mm -hmm. So you're like totally enclosed. And uh, so I wore the rose for like like three days, like just solid, even inside. And uh, during that time, I couldn't really watch TV or play games. Didn't stop you. Yeah, we yes, didn't stop you. We yes, it did. This. No, it didn't. We about this the last first week. day, the first day, <laughs> all I did was listen to audiobooks. Sure, buddy. Whatever. The second day, I went on my computer. <laughs> yeah, man, we saw you on there. We're like, no, yeah. the first day, I think uh, me and Blaven were talking in the podcast thread, and like, you should have said, Anthony has seen this, like, what? Oh, I looked at my phone. Oh! I looked at my phone. I wanted to see what was up. Yeah, see? Oh. See? See? I cheated. I cheated. cheated. But yeah, like, I probably I probably shouldn't have, but I did. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'm good. It's about the mistakes you make now, how they'll affect you 20 years down the line. I don't recommend you people <laughs> listening to do what I did. But yeah, so I've been listening to audiobooks, and I listened to a Stephen King book called The Stand. Oh, and what it is, is a post-apocalyptic story, uh, and the government accidentally, re like, the, uh, one of their test subjects gets, escapes, and he releases a virus that kills 99.6 of the human population on Percent. the earth. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah, 99.6. And so it follows, like, the few remaining people, uh, in these towns, and, and like, it, it, like Stephen, like Stephen King books, like, it gets really weird and, and horror- so, like there's a really cool twist mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. in the middle of the book, but I don't want to say it. But it's it's a really interesting book, and I've been continuing to listen to it. I'm like halfway through it about right now. I'm on, I'm part twenty of forty three. Damn. Whoa. Yeah, and each part is well, it's on an audiobook, so each part is about forty five minutes long. Okay. Yeah. So it's 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 a it's a long book, but uh, it's it's really cool. Uh, the other thing I've been doing, or after my eyes healed, was I played Devil May Cry three again, because yeah. I got the HD collection. You bought that? No, I got it. From, I bought it from Blaven. Oh, okay. And uh, I lost all my skill at that game. Like on the PS two version, I beat it on the hardest difficulty, but now I can't like do what are relatively simple things. What are like like uh, like frame jumps and stuff. Oh, which so are so simple. Yeah, so simple, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. So let me explain. So what that is is like. I'll Look give at you an this example. Guy over here. Is uh, so if you have the 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 weapon Beowulf, it's like the the fist and uh, feet thing. Mm -hmm. You kick people. In the air, he has this move where you dive kick, homing kicked onto a person. Yeah. And so when you hit that character or when you hit that NPC, mm -hmm. there's a there's like a just a brief moment where you stop, mm -hmm. and you can jump. And because what happens is that your character is on top of the enemy character, and so it counts that your feet are touching ground. Sure. When, oh, I see. But you jump off the enemy, and you get another jump. And so you can, like, repeat that dive kick over and over again, and no one can touch you. Yeah. And that's kind of how I did it on, on the PlayStation, but I can't do that anymore. So that game's a lot harder <laughs> than it was when I, when I used to play it. Uh, but no, it's, it's... Who are you? Yeah, it's still, it's still really fun. And I think that game is gonna is on my my top ten favorite games of all time. I could have told you that. Yeah, Dante is such a badass. He's pretty gay, but all He's right. So badass. No nah, man, that guy. I can't wait till he comes out. This party's getting crazy. <laughs> I like all these dudes. <laughs> no, but he hangs out with like Trish and Lady and that girl from Two. Yeah, because he has to protect his image. <laughs> He doesn't bang those chicks. No, he does not. I thought he was just playing hard to get. <laughs> He's not interested at all. He's the son of Sparta. You know what he likes? And then Virgil... he, likes, he likes long barrels. That's what he likes. Oh my god, here we go. That's too good. Exactly. That's what he loves. Hot loaded barrels. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Gross! But uh, also, in this, because the HD collection is a special edition, it has Virgil as well. Of course. And uh, Virgil's moveset is is a lot different it's than... Uh, yeah. Than, bleh, 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 than Dante's. And uh, But when you play through the game, it's you just play through Dante's story. There's no like unique levels or anything. You just go... Oh, it's the, just a character swap? Yeah, it's a character swap, and then it's got a few unique cutscenes. Oh, and, okay. And then, that's what I was going to ask. In the cutscenes, is it switch to Dante? No, no, no. But on the, on the boss fights where you have to fight Virgil... Because you're already Virgil. What they do is that they just put Virgil, but they put him in a red coat. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, well, then. Well, yeah. then. <laughs> so it's really weird. Talk about lazy. Yeah. 
But uh, but also on the Devil May Cry is all of them. I played two. Yeah. So Ridiculous. I was like, two can't be that bad. Like yeah. my memory must be fucking with me. Yeah. Two is that bad. Oh. Two is terrible. Oh, good. I thought I thought Revengeance was short. I beat that game in two hours. Nice. Like it's fucking crazy. I didn't even speed run it. Like I forgot where half the things were too. It's just that short. There are no cutscenes. Whenever there are cutscenes, Dante never talks. He just looks at him, at the enemy, and then it's just like, then all of a sudden the screen breaks into gameplay. Like, nice. I think he talks a line at the beginning and he talks a line at the end. And that's about it. So you don't like this game? No, this game's terrible. This game is one of the worst games ever made. Oh, how do you go from like, <laughs> gold? Yeah, gold to just shit. Yeah, like Devil May Cry 1 was like pretty good. Devil yeah. May Cry 2 is utter garbage. And yeah. the Devil May Cry 3 is like like one the best Devil May Cry. Yeah, I agree. So. I don't know how uh, how that happened. How they fired everyone on the Devil May Cry 2 staff and then they got all new staff. That's how they did it. <laughs> Flamboyant staff. <laughs> like, fucking Christ. But yeah, then I didn't bother playing one. Because one's so good, right? Yeah, what? Cause, cause jump is on triangle. And That's I can't, awesome, oh, and it's, I can't handle that shit. It's Resident Evil, man. It is Resident Evil. It's all fixed cameras. You yeah. love it. Yeah. Uh, what else did I do with my week? Heat. Heat. I watched the movie The Heat. Uh, it's a buddy cop movie with Sandra Bullock and that girl something McCartney. Just, what? Jessica. What? Jessica McCarthy. No, the Jessica McCarthy. McCarthy. Yeah. Okay. The girl from, yeah, the girl from oh, Bridesmaids. So Stolen Identity and, and yeah, Bridesmaids. Yeah. Bridesmaids. Yeah. Okay. And so uh this movie like it's it's, it's okay. Like it's it's a it's a buddy cop movie with chicks. With chicks. Oh, that movie. Yeah. And this will look, look totally uninteresting to me. It it all it is is it is a by the books buddy cop movie. Mm. It is two different cops from two different areas. Who don't know how to work well with like partners, and they have two different ways of fighting crime, but then they have to work together to take down this greater evil. Oh, yeah, cool. and and then they and through their trials and taking down crime together, they learn to be friends and they learn to like other people. It's like it's a buddy cop movie. It hits all the bullet points. There is a turning point in their friendship. There is a like there is a after they have they gain their friendship, they lose their friendship. And then they gain it back even stronger. Like, they just hit all the points. Wow. Uh, e- even down to the villains. Like, like in buddy cop movies, the villain is always some unassuming guy. Boom. Same thing in, in this movie. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, also, the one thing is Biff from Back to the Future is in it. Hmm. What? Yeah, like he plays one of the police chiefs what? in the movie. Huh. And then also, uh, one of the guys from Mad TV is in it. Hmm. Okay, I could. See he's like he's that. like a he's like a really lanky, tall white dude. Okay. Yeah, I forget his name. Fuck. But yeah, no, he's in it, and that was weird voice. That, that was weird character choices because I could I couldn't think of anything but Mad TV. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not gonna get that out of my head. So you don't recommend this movie? I don't recommend this movie. No, I liked it. <laughs> Man, you're you're really aching for me to go see it too. I wanted to see it. I really wanted to see it. You know, you know what movie I heard, heard did worse than this? What? White House Down. The one I really <laughs> want to see? White House Down. Yeah, so. There's a barometer. Anything Anthony really is looking forward to just... Is probably avoid. real bad. Just avoid. Yeah, I heard it flopped at the box office. You know what I really want to see? Yeah, it just really flopped. Real steel. Oh, come on. See? <laughs> you guys liked it. You guys... Yeah, I know you guys no, you didn't hate it. You know what I really want to see? Pacific Rim. Uh, no, you don't. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. It looks so good. No, don't say that. It looks so good. <laughs> you know what else I really want to see? Wolverine movie. That's valid. <laughs> I, I totally understand that. I want to see that movie. I can end you from your eternal suffering. Oh, God. <laughs> so good. So bad. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. Uh, and... Toronto Games Meetup. Oh, yeah. Thanks for... Uh, yeah, you know my week better than I do. I write the show notes, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. And so, also, I went I to... the show on the road. I went to Toronto after my eyes were healed. And... I went to like a games meetup. So yeah. if people who listen to this podcast might know the podcast A4 Play. Mm. And in Japan they have their they have like a little bar get together where people can meet up and like talk games and stuff. Yes. And talk shop. And so some fans in Toronto wanted to do the same thing. So it's like every every last Wednesday of the month 
I don't know if it's going to be at the same bar every time, but there's like a Facebook group for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called there. It's called Torontaru, mm. and it's a meetup for people to come and play, like talk about games, play games, uh, and just all that kind of stuff. And it's just a big old, big mm-hmm. old nerd gathering. Mm. Uh, it was cool because the bar we went to is called Get Well. All the games are on free play mm. for all the classic retro games, and then. Uh, the two pinball machines they had it was twenty five cents for four balls, mm. and I was like, "That's deal and a half." Mm. So it, it was it was fun, uh, but I not a lot of people there were interested in talking about games. They were interested in talk. It was all like aspiring indie devs. Oh, so it's like kids just out of school being like, "You're they're like it's basically it turned into a networking." That's like, what it thing. is. Yeah, and I th- I didn't think it'd be that. Oh. So, like, it, it was fun. Like, I met some cool people. But, uh, but yeah. <laughs> like, at, at one point, some guys were talking about Devil May Cry, and I was like, oh, man, let's, I love Devil May Cry. Let's talk about Devil May Cry. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, like, the animations in Devil May Cry, how you can cancel this into this. I want to try to do that in my game. And I'm like, fuck, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about your game. I want to talk about Devil May Cry. And, yeah, it, it was fun. But I met some cool people, and I might go again. Because it's once a month. So yeah, how did you like it, Blavin? Um, or were you totally out of the loop? I was totally out of the loop. I just was drinking and playing games. So you know how that goes for Blavin. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so why didn't you come? Because you knew this was going to happen. Or yeah, gonna, yeah, I knew what this was. Ah. Yeah. It's also hipster central. I knew. I know where this no is. No one knows how to trim a beard. Yeah. No one. Flannel. Well, I think on Anthony, also flannel and plaid. I think uh, there was a one telling feature where Anthony on Twitter said, Man, these people want to play game, make games, but they haven't played them. Yeah, and I'm like, well, that's disappointing. It is. It's like so. Like when I when I, I was trying to talk like talk about games, and I'm like, oh, that's an interesting idea. It's like this. It's like this. Or like I would give them examples, right? And they'll be like, oh, I've never played that. Or even worse is like eighty percent of them would be like, I've never even heard of that. And it's like uh... you're making a game in the same genre that has these great things, and it's like. It's not a fresh new idea that you're doing. It's mm. like, here is why that concept is great. And mm-hmm. like, here are examples. But they just have no idea of what it is. And it's mm. like, Blavin, me and Blavin were talking about this before. And it's like, if they're making games, they don't really have time to play games, right? And like, that makes sense. I don't think so. I don't think that makes any sense. Well, okay. The friend I said who works is my coworker. Yeah. I, mean, I always ask him, have you played this or you played that? He's like, no. He's like, what did you do last night? Oh, I was working on my game. And he has his full-time job too, right? Yeah, well, some but people may not. That's true, but it's like, what did you do growing up? Like, if you have all these ideas that, like, were... They must have come from somewhere. That's true. Right? But I think maybe they don't play this generation's games. Because my, my friend, he played grew up playing 64 and stuff. Yeah. And then now he's he hasn't gone to the next gen yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he's, like, yeah. a special case, right? He only makes, like... Yeah, he doesn't like, make. He like, makes like Game and Watch. He's games. not making like anything. No, 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 no. Like, yeah, like these people over here, they're making. They're using like three D modeling studios and like trying to make like big. Like, okay, that makes sense. Like, yeah, new, yeah, yeah. like new groundbreaking stuff, but it's like if you're not in the loop that's right now with yeah, video games, like right. how do you expect to go and progress? And that that's what was disappointing. It was it, it was it's disappointing, and it also was like it's eye opening. It's eye opening because it's like how like you. There are these indie devs, like the guy who made, I don't know if you heard of the Steam game, it's called They Bleed Pixels. Mm-hmm. It was, that guy was there, the, the guy who created that game. Oh, was he? Yeah, he was there. Uh, and it was really easy to spot him because he was wearing a shirt that had his game on it. Mm. But, uh, like, I'm sure that guy's, like, or to make that game, he has played other games and he knows why that kind of game is good. And then he put <laughs> his own unique twist on it. Yeah. But these other people are like, I'm trying to make a first person puzzler that deals with culture shock. And I'm like, yeah, you go ahead and do that because what type of uh, what type of message you're trying to go for in a game, yeah. A, doesn't sound like it fits in a video game yeah. and especially doesn't fit, sounds like it fits in a puzzle game. Mm. And it's like, they don't, it's like they don't understand why each genre make, like, yeah. makes... Makes it great. Like, why does why are first person shooters great? Why is for Call of Duty so good? Yeah. It's not just just because it's a first person shooter. It's because what? it does these things. Oh, Blade wants to jump in. I want to hear this. I just, I mean, just look at it this way, though, Anthony. Like, who are you to say that that idea is not going to work? Yeah, true. I'm um, no like go on. <laughs> this yeah. is not. This is it's just opinion. This is just opinion time. Yeah. And Anthony has an opinion that I want to get off my chest. Yeah. yeah. No. No. Like to an extent, I agree with Anthony. Like, it's hard to to. 
it's like making a movie and not watching any of the classics. That's what I, that's the example I put on my okay, that's true. And it's like, uh, like the reason, like, like right now you're going through your art thing, right? And they're showing you like classic forms of animation and whatnot, are they not? Yeah, I guess so. Right? And so like, like even you, you're taking your own interest. Like you bought that, uh, you bought that Astro Boy art. Okay, wait, wait, hold on. Back up. Okay. First of all, they're not showing me art. They're showing me tech drawing techniques. Right. So this right. is proven and proven techniques. Yeah. Which is why I can understand why they they've already learned how to do these techniques. Okay. Maybe they're making it their own way. But I understand what you mean by like, oh, this movie has classic composition, you know, these kind of mm-hmm. shots, those kind of shots mm-hmm. that you mm-hmm. could use mm-hmm. for ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. Okay, okay. That's that's what I'm okay, 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 I get okay, that. Okay. I get that. Yeah. I get that. But again, once people think, you know, maybe once people think that they have all the skills necessary to do it. They just go out and do it and not think that they can draw inspiration somewhere else. No, no, Like, right. for me, yeah. like, whenever I draw something, it's like, oh, hey, and then I see something else, I'm like, man, if I just drew it like that, it'd be way better. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, I understand what you guys are getting at okay, and stuff. Okay, that's, yeah. that's what I was trying to get at before. Yeah. But, yeah, it, I'll probably go again because it, it was only the first one. Hopefully, it gets more popular. Maybe there'll be some more people to talk shop with. The coolest people we met were actually not there for the event. Yeah, the, that was <laughs> weird because they're just like, yeah. yeah, we just came in here because it was packed. We're like... That's awesome. Yeah, they're Australians. Mm. Yeah, it was, a, it was a husband and wife visiting. <laughs> and we're like, so, yeah. you didn't know there was a nerd meetup? Like, nope. Well, there's free play games. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony got defeated on Galaga. It's yeah, I had the high score for most of the night on Galaga. Mm. And then some dude took it by like 10,000. But then we left. So I was like, ah. And then Frogger was just really difficult for me. Frogger's hard. Frogger's a hard game. <laughs> yeah. I remember trying that as a kid. Yeah. Didn't make it past the first level. And I was like, you made it past the first level. I he got to the it. part wow. where the wow. he, got, he got to the part where the ending points now have crocodiles and wow. also they can kill you. Pinball's bullshit. Pinball is bullshit. It's crazy, mm. man. The shit just goes out in the middle all the time. Yes, it does. I swear to God, there's a funnel there. You gotta, <laughs> get, you gotta get the magic hips, man. You, you gotta, gotta, get you that gotta tilt. tilt that, man. You gotta tilt. <laughs> you gotta tilt. He tried to tilt. He got the tilt warning. Oh, caught him. I've never tilted. Yo, when it got caught. Yeah, when, when it got caught. caught yeah. but like, <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I don't ever intentionally. Oh, kill okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that shit's hilarious. But yeah, no. Um, I figure we should go next time. We should put up a sign. T and I V. We should make t-shirts. We should oh, make t-shirts! We should make t-shirts! Yeah. What's that all about? Well, it's just, you know. You know it's just a little, thing. Little thing. Yeah, you can't tell them, though. You'd be like, check it out. If you're interested, check it out. <laughs> we'll start a booth. Yeah. <laughs> At a bar. <laughs> no, we'll be in front of the, the place, like like a lemonade stand. Aww. With our own beer. <laughs> With our own beer? 25 cents for a glass. Uh. Yeah, I was thinking of like contacting people and being like, listen, I'll bring a PlayStation and a TV and I'll be like, this is the game of the month. <laughs> this is looks like what it does. And wow, that'd does be actually this. really cool. And it'll mm-hmm. be like education segment. Mm. This is death by degrees. Don't copy anything that is in this game. <laughs> Can you imagine like they play it and then the guy's like, some guy just sees it, gets shocked and runs out. Turns, <laughs> out, turns out he has the exact same idea. He just <laughs> stop development of his whole team right now. <laughs> Guys, stop. Stop. It's already been done and it's shit. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But yeah. So were you just having us go out as like your feelers and then report back? Pretty much. We should have said th- otherwise. Be like, it was the greatest. It was the greatest. We just they're giving free PS3s. <laughs> they just yes. gave us money. They gave us beer wrapped in money. When I saw the address, I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know where this is. Like I haven't been to the place where like I know this area. I'm not going there. Wait, what's the area? Nothing. It's just like town? it's just like that part of Toronto where you're like, oh man, hipster central. Yeah, like, or is it? Yeah, oh. that's. I told you it was the part of Toronto where I went to go uh, partake in a free independent student art museum. Keyword being independent. Independent. That place was shit. Oh, I, I I went for free and I wanted my money back. <laughs> <laughs> I I still would have gone even though I knew it was hipster central. Yeah. Who knows what could happen? You can you can play a new game. Oh, It'll yeah, be the special could. thanks. Totally, totally. You could. But yeah, it was fun talking. It was interesting to talk to people about who make games and it's like to talk about their thought process. Mm. And I was like, I'd love to get that like down on paper or on yeah. audio. Something hey, that I recorded. You met the writer for a magazine. Eh? Yeah, I read the, the... Apparently there's a... Mag- I didn't hear... I don't know if this magazine's called Now Magazine. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is that a big thing? Not really. Okay. Well, he was like the games columnist for that magazine. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Never heard of your magazine. Yeah. Oh, well, hey. But yeah, it was pretty sick. That's interesting. But that was, that's been it. That's been my week. Well, why don't you uh, double team with Blavin on duels? Maybe uh, I will. Yeah, so... We ramp all the way. So, <laughs> you know what I did on Tuesday? What did you do? Like, what man, did you do? 
I'm just gonna turn on a PlayStation. Oh my god, those little planes workers is out. I literally, literally ran from my bed straight to my PS3, oh, turned it on, okay. and downloaded that shit. Add funds, let's go. How much is it? Uh, Ten dollars. Mm. So this game is again another installment of Duels of the Planeswalker 2014. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it gives you ten new decks to try out, but it comes with this new sealed mode, and I finally figured out how the sealed mode works. Basically, you get a sealed, you get five booster packs, you get two slots. So your first slot has five booster packs, or six, sorry, and then. You can use it in a campaign mode and win three more booster packs. Mm. And then that's it for that slot. Mm. Like Those are the cards that you have for that slot. Mm-hmm. Second slot, same thing. And if you want to buy additional slots after those first two slots, yeah. they're $2 each. So okay. you get for every $2, you get a, nine, a set of six booster packs, and then you can play it in the campaign and get another three. Mm-hmm. So everybody's complaining, oh my god, you know, if somebody opens the nuts on their booster pack, then they win, right? Yeah. Sorry, kids. That's how sealed play works. You don't just get one pool and live with it. Yeah. It's basically you keep playing and, you know, you work with the pool you've got, right? Luckily, I got a pretty good pool, blue-black. Haven't lost yet. Pretty funny. There's some pretty funny players out there. Um, yeah, and then the new decks they have is pretty standard. They've got a new blue deck, illusions deck, enchantment auras, ramping, and my personal favorite right now is slivers, which are basically these, I guess... Mutant things that come out and they give other slivers a boost. So one sliver yeah. is like all your other slivers get plus one, plus one. Yeah. Another one is like all your slivers have first strike, all your slivers have... So, you know, when they all are on the field at the same time, everybody yeah. gets the shared bonuses. Yes. It's like a hive mind thing. But I think my favorite card in that, in that deck is just this card that costs three mana and one white. Destroy all lands. Wow. <laughs> so, like, a really big deck that Anthony likes in air. Everybody, everybody likes. Everybody likes. Because, I mean, it is just pretty... It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. It's uh, this green ramp deck which gets you to, like, 11 land and you start dropping shit that no one can deal with. Mm-hmm. Called the Eldrazi. But, like, when you're in turn f- 6 and they've ramped to 10 out of their 24 lands and you just wipe it all. Yeah. When you have a lot of little critters and they have nothing, mm-hmm. they can't recover. <laughs> I already have a board state. They have... They used up all their ramp, and then that's gone. Yeah. So yeah, that's been that's been my week like that, <laughs> doing that to people. But it's been it's been a tough road, but uh, I'm really enjoying it. I'm looking forward to seeing the new 2014 cards. And what, when's that coming? That's coming in two weeks. The pre-release is on July 12th, the night of the night of uh, right. Pacific Rim. But then it's coming out the week after that, so I guess the 19th. Okay. Yeah. So that's when 2014 is coming out. That means 2013 is rotating out. I think. Oh. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. I really don't like their packaging now. Remember how last year it was like a black and silver, yeah, yeah. which looked really sick? Yeah. Now it's like orange and blue. It's kind of gross. Oh, so they went for high contrast? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't like that color scheme anyway. Yeah, the black and, the black and silver was sick. Yeah, it did look sick. And really? the, the boost was like a matte finish. Yeah, yeah. it was insane. It was nice. Yeah, it was really, it was really nice. So, you know, 2014 has been heralded as one of the best sets in a while. So yeah. I'm sad we didn't play enough of it. But anyway, um, actually it's been taking up a lot of my week. So, I I wouldn't doubt that you wouldn't doubt that. And um, uh, I did watch a weather movie. Uh, I did watch a magic movie, not Magic the Gathering, Magic Tricks. Oh, I watched the amazing Burt Wonderstone. Wow! I bought the the Blu-ray DVD combo pack, the digital copy, and ultraviolet. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> and uh, this show is about Steve Carell, who's a magician called Burt Wonderstone, and his friend Anton, which is played by Steve Buscemi, and their assistant Jane, who is Olivia Wilde. Yes. They're competing against Jim Carrey, who's playing this uh, this Chris Angel type magician named Steve Gray, who has his own show called like Steve The Mind Rapist. Gray. The Mind, Mind Rapist. rapist. <laughs> oh so, my god! So basically, the whole thing is that Bert goes out of business because there's a new age of magic, and the yeah. new age of magic is basically him doing gross stunts, like holding his pee for forty eight for like a week. Or like sleeping on a hot oh. coal. You know what I mean? So it's not like actual magic. It's just like physical stunts. Yeah. And so he has, it's like the climb back, you know, from an old school magician to get yeah. in the crowd. But uh, there's a funny twist at the end, which I really like. And this movie I thought was really funny. Just because like, as a magician, oh shit. Well, I said it. I'm not actually a professional magician. But I practice magic. God damn it. Cut. Um, Boston. Oh, I don't want to call myself. I'm a, I'm a magician. I'm a, I'm a magician. Too. Oh no, no, this is not gonna end. 
<laughs> First time an artist now. <laughs> He's a magic artist. Yo, man. <laughs> I hate you guys. You are in too, oh, uh, too deep. I'm yeah. too deep. Just like that Sun 41 song. Literally, I cannot say anything. I gotta watch what I say. Yeah. Yeah. That's never gonna happen. But anyway... As a person who enjoys magic, yeah, this movie was great, and I definitely recommend it to everybody. It's really good. Um, I don't want to spoil too much because we're gonna watch it tonight. Oh, so it's are gonna we? be fun. We are. Oh. We are. We're all gonna cuddle up, you know, in our big five-person blanket. I'm gonna do this. Yes, yes, you did. You signed the waiver. You were Shit, I did sign the waiver. I didn't know that's what it was for. You didn't read the fine print, did you? No. <laughs> S- snuggle and watch movies with Blavin. Shit. Article five point eight. Shit. Uh, but yeah, so that's been my week. That's what's me. Cool. Uh, to to wrap things up, I wa well, I did three things. The first thing was I watched this documentary on on Discovery Channel called Curiosity, catching the giant squid. What is what is with you and water animals? First mermaids, now giant squids. <sighs> did, you for did, you, did you go to the Marianas Trench? Well, if it, if it helps, my favorite Pokemon Squirtle. That's true. That makes sense. So there we go. Maybe that's why I like bugs so much. My favorite Pokemon Scyther. Oh, there you go. You know what? You could be a good Captain Ahab. Hunt that Moby Dick. Yeah. Oh, maybe, yeah, because I like pirates. <laughs> What's your white whale? And I'm currently loving river monsters. Yeah, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, okay, we got there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's about catching the Kraken. The Croc. The Kraken. Um, Did they tell you where that name came from? I thought no? the Kraken was an octopus. No, it's a giant squid. Yeah. I don't know. Either. No, do they do they explain the whole name? They, they explain that it was a, a mythical <laughs> legend made up by a writer. Oh, and then it turns out to be real. No, because back in the early 1800s or early whatever, when they would hunt giant sperm whales, yeah, uh, they would see giant tentacles attached to them. Ooh. And they'd be like 25 foot long tentacles. And they'd be like, well, this could probably only belong to one thing, a giant squid. Hell yes. <laughs> yeah. And then there'd be like reportings of giant squid. Like, yeah, it engulfed my boat. And people would be like, whatever. <laughs> You're right. And then lo and behold, holy shit, dead giant squid found on the beach. Are you serious? Yeah, and like up until now, giant squid have only been found dead. Really? Yeah, and they're in museums, and you can and you can see them at the uh, the Smithsonian has one. What? Well, let's go. Yeah. Uh, and anyways, so they they try and set out to look for footage because they've never seen one in real life, and the problem is it lives deep, deep in the ocean. So they they pull together all the squid experts of the world. <laughs> of the world. And it's like they have this. This retreat where they just think about ideas of how they could film the squid. And it's like, I can't believe people get paid to do this. Like, you are in uh, Australia, you're at the summit, and you are just talking about how do we catch a giant squid. Anyways, they, they, they boil it down to three people. Or have three different ideas, and they're going to go on this expedition in all these subs for 40 days on a ship. So they have the American, the girl who knows nothing really about squid, but her, her expertise is in bioluminescence, especially underwater. Ah, cool. So she's like, I'm going to I'm gonna capture this squid on camera by pretending I'm a jellyfish and it's going to come get me. Nice. They have this, this kooky New Zealander scientist who's been studying giant squid for 15 years and he was my favorite character. He's, uh, he's a bit crazy and he's like, listen, if there's one thing that all animals in the world have in common, they want to fuck. So I'm going to put <laughs> all the sort of squid pheromones in the water. And so he just takes squid and he puts them in blenders yeah, and then he makes, <gasps> like, he makes this, like, this slurpy serum that he's going to shoot out into the water. That's hilarious. It's kind of hot. Yeah, and then there's this old Japanese guy. He's, like, six years old. He's like, I'm going to do it the only way I know how. I'm going to go giant squid fishing with small, like, two feet long squid as bait. And the whole thing is pinned as, like, <laughs> it's an American production, so they pin the American girl as, like, the hero character, and they make the Australian dude... Like, as the, the villain, like, no, I need to catch this, blah, blah, blah. And then they just be like, the Japanese guy's there just for cultural diversity. <laughs> like, that's what they film. It's a comic like, relief. And I'm like, this is kind of dumb. Like, wh- what? And, and But at the, at the end, they, it's the Japanese dude who, who, who gets the footage. And when you see this thing, it's like, wow. That, so it really does exist. And it's like this giant, massive, tentacle squid. And it's just eating this other... Little bait squid. It's it's actually a really huge squid. Yeah, it's like the one they saw was like forty feet long, and like it oh, it was fighting underwater or it came up to the surface. No, they they had to go in their subs and they stayed down there at like ten hour dives at a time. Yeah, and wow. he just had a bait out there, and then it just came, and he was just like amazing. Oh my god, that's, that's pretty fucking cool. That's yeah, insane. so like the giant squid's eyeball is the size of your head. That's it. What? Yeah. So it's it's crazy, and it's like, whew. 
It's a, it, it's weird because it's like, oh man, this is like a fantasy monster, but it fucking exists. Yeah. That's like the one, the, isn't that like the one thing on Earth that's like not really explored is like deep, deep. Yeah, ocean. they say we know more about the moon than we do about our oceans. Yeah. That's insane. Which is crazy. It's like, yeah, we only know about 5% of what's in the water. So when you think about it, it's like, well, what else is out there, right? I heard like, it's like when you get really deep where the sun can't reach, it's like all the fish are just see-through if you brought them up. Because there's, yeah, like, there's no and, reason yeah, for like and protection. Yeah, and all the, all the fish basically live off bioluminescence, so like they all can flash lights and colors and stuff. Yeah. And so like the giant squid, when they first saw it, it was silvery, and then it just started like glowing different colors. And... Well, I mean, um, do you hear about, like, did you ever see the footage of people taking pictures of what gets brought up during a tsunami? It's uh, insane. Some These, like sometimes, like, because you know how tsunamis, like, yeah, they just you know water comes up, right? Yeah, yeah. So like it brings out some like fish from under like from deep 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 yeah and like some of these fishes are crazy looking they look yeah. like they're like terrors like literally yeah. like terrors yeah like i don't i would be pretty scared though like if i was in that because their sub is probably the size of like it's basically a bubble it's a sphere okay with like mechanical arms around it oh it's one of the personal subs yeah it's not a big oh sub. i was like army sub and no then it's on... like three people there's the pilot the cameraman and the scientist so not all three scientists go at once wow it's just three dudes and they're down there for like 10 hours at a time in the dark underwater and it's like well what if this thing fails yeah what no like what if it just eats you so that's the thing like they were worried like well what if the squid tries to attack us and they're like well, what if we fuck the squid what if a shark comes and tries to eat us yeah it's pretty cool Let's put guns on the fucking like, so wait what was this what was this documentary called uh curiosity it's okay. a it's a it's a documentary it's a discovery channel series i think there's 24 episodes mm -hmm. and you know it was it was discovery channel's big play at trying to compete with the bbc on their documentaries mm -hmm. you can't compete with the BBC. but you can't no like the bbc ones are all better like this is very they got david attenborough yeah like this this one is it relies on very um uh by the book american like uh filming yeah it's like it sounds like they tried to produce a story they out. did and it's like before and after the commercials it's a lot of repetition of what you've been seeing already it's all lead up to, and like last week yeah like it's it's like we come from a commercial break it's like we were there are three scientists blah 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 at the scene and, and, and it's like five minutes of catch up before you actually caught up to where the uh, commercial stopped and it's like it's a lot of reused footage and retelling it in different ways to, to eke out the two hour time limit and mm -hmm. but no the footage at the end is totally worth it I just watched it just now yeah it's, it's insane, insane. Yeah. Yo, it's like this giant squid. <laughs> and then I uh, I decided to delve into Dust 514. Yeah, why? Because I really... Because this, this game, I feel like I need to know. Like, I, I, I have to know what it is about this space combat that is uh, there. Again, why? So I, I visited forums. I watched a lot of YouTube channels. I... Uh, this is insane, Vince. I uh, read a couple uh, uh, hints and tips and walkthroughs and whatever. I know. backs. I know all there is to know about Dust 514. <laughs> I haven't yet played the game. <laughs> what the fuck? I just know how everything works. So when I get back in, I'm going to have to terminate my character and start over. Because you already made some mistakes? I did make mistakes, yeah. I did. <laughs> is it a mistake that you didn't shoot enough dudes in the face? So basically, it's not min-maxing, huh? It is all min-maxing. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Um, here's a, it's, it is an MMO... In the sense that it is just grinding to get your skill trees through and, and upgrade your skill points and stuff. And people who have been playing a while have a huge advantage over you. Like, they can reload faster, they have better shields, they can take more hits, they have better weapons. Like, when you start out, you are going in on the back foot. This is not Call of Duty where it's like, well, that weapon just suits my playstyle differently. No, this is, I'm better than you. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Shit. Yo, I like this. So I'm like, that's a really interesting concept, right? Anyways, the game types I figured out, it is basically Battlefield. Yeah. There is just deathmatch or there is capture points, whatever. Uh, there's also clans and corporations. I'm currently still looking for a corporation I want to join. Yeah. To join a corporation, you actually can't do it in the game. You have to do it on their website. <laughs> like the corp's real website, and you got to apply, and they, they go through your application. They take this shit seriously. No, Eve's crazy. People who play Eve are crazy. Yeah. So, uh, it's basically Battlefield gameplay with uh, RPG skill trees. The only thing that's bugging me is, 
why am I doing this? Like, what is the purpose besides to just kill things? Like, what are the missions? And as of right now, there's no reason. Sort of thought. Uh, Tuesday, tomorrow, yeah. uh, a big update is coming out, and I'm hoping that that, that, that gives me more incentive to want to play. Mm -hmm. Because when this turns into, like right now, it, is, it feels still like a test bed, but when it turns into finally like, oh, there are missions, people are recruiting you to, to help them fight this and that from EVE Online, then that's when this game will become yeah, wasn't, crazy. Wouldn't they say that it's like it'll take certain battles will take place on certain worlds, and then people could call airstrikes from their ship? Yeah. The so PC what game. they're doing is month they they have this monthly update uh, schedule where they're gonna keep loading in things until the game finally gets better and better and better, and they'll keep doing that. Okay. But right now it's relatively early because it only launched in May, so there's only been two big updates. Tomorrow's gonna be the third, and then yeah, there you go. That's a dust. So I'm gonna con I'm going to continue playing this throughout the year because I'm like I wanna I need a shooter to just dive into when I'm bored. Yo, Coblops. I I don't have it. Buy it. No, but dust is free to play, and like there's there's reason for me to play because we're gonna see so much money. Man, like skill trees. Uh, I also learned. You know how like all your resources are consumable. Consumable. Yeah. So I learned that the only reason why you'd ever spend money is to buy the blueprints to your weapon or blueprints to your armor. You buy the blueprint, that weapon is not ex consumable anymore. Because you guy can make it now. He has the... He has the blueprint. Yeah, he doesn't need to just keep buying the weapon. So that is the only reason to sink money into this game. Uh, so if I always want this M4, yes. then I need to buy the blueprint. You it. buy the blueprint for it. Of course it's not an M4, it's from Future Tech. Space M4. Yeah, there you go. Choose the lasers. Yeah. Is there a medic class? Uh, yes, there is. There's a sniper useful. class? Uh, there's a sniper class. Uh, yeah, I'm currently doing the, the light... Assault, basically. Okay. Like, not the heavy, because uh, that's... It suits my playstyle most. I mean, I could go in to do the sniper thing, but it, I just not have as much fun. Yeah. Even though these are the type of games where sniper is the fun funnest, because it's super big maps. Battlefield uh, 2, man, that's all I did. You yeah. just go to no, the weirdest great. fucking places with helicopters. Uh, I, I learned how to summon vehicles and stuff, but I realize I can't because I don't I don't have enough money to, to buy vehicles to, to summon. <laughs> <laughs> Poor ass crap. So like, this is a game that I'm gonna just grind into. And speaking of medic, if you play The Last of Us, just mm. switch your clan to or switch your loader to medic, you will make twice the amount of money in that game. What in Five Four? In no, no, in Last of Us. If you're doing there's a medic class. Yeah, we have to unlock it. Like there's a there's a, a perk system where like you can heal and then revive super fast. I switched that out and I'm like, holy shit! I don't even have to play the game anymore. If I just stick beside someone and hold triangle the whole time, I earn double. The score that everybody else does in the match. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fucked. It's broken that way. It's like you shouldn't even be playing it. Like, wait, is this the move right? It really it makes building up your camp player. real easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. But anyways, yeah, that's that. Dust five and four. I'm again gonna continue on until because I, I don't think there's another shooter on the horizon that's really interesting me at the moment or that I'm looking forward to except for Titanfall. But Titanfall, you need a whole new system for that shit. Exactly. So dust is, looks like it's gonna be my my. My last shooter for this generation. Like $500 FPS right there. I know, so... Whatever, right? Right. Anyways, and the last whatever thing... PC Master Race. Yeah, whatever. I mean, this is going to turn into... If I really get into this, I'll like, you watch. I'm going to have my laptop there with, like, EVE Online. I don't... I don't I'm not part of the Master Race crew. <laughs> I don't really care. Yeah. But uh, at the end of last week's show, I talked about uh, some Power Ranger stuff. Uh, I talked about the Legacy Megazord. And then after we recorded, me and TJ went up to his house. Holy shit, we went through all the Power Rangers toys he has. And guess what? He has all of them. Literally all of them? Like, he has all of them from seasons one to three. Wow. And we were just like, oh man, it was like being a kid again. And we were doing, and this time I knew how to do all the transformations totally fine. Had no problems with it. Uh, and it's super fun. And we have the Dragon Zord here today. That's what we're clicking. <sighs> This thing is a brick. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> it right? moves its hands up and down. It does fucking nothing. But yeah. it's so cool to look at. Right. It is it's a statue. Yeah, it is like and like the most he can do is bend over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and just take it. Like it's funny because he has a drill drill. And it's ass. like and we're thinking like why why do, like why do we have so much fun with it? Like it can't Because when you're a kid you went like Bah And that's exactly what we did, and then we made all the combinations and it's like why was the Dragon Sword relegated to just being like a piece of shit cape for the Megazord? Did you uh, do you remember the Dragon Sword in the show? Yeah. It was this. Yeah, and it's like and when it punched, it turned its whole body. Yeah, and he bent over to yeah. swing and his he's tail. Like, yeah. 
was and, cool. And you did a head spin. Yeah, no, but anyways, no. I only did this because it was in preparation of like the, the SH figure words I got this week. Or the day after. And so, of course, the first one I got was the the Green Ranger. The Green Ranger. He's very slim. And uh, this is a hot commodity, ladies and gentlemen. Hot commodity. I will say he's not the best video art out there. Like, straight up, he's not. He's what he's now. He's fucking cool as a lay ever. You're like, yo. Can they go to the oh. You can. Can you equip it? Yeah, he has different hands, and he has... Okay. He also comes with the Sword of Darkness, the bigger sword. Ooh. When he was evil, and... The shield is not removable. Uh, nope. And this... I, I have the Japanese version, so mine comes with special parts from Akiba Ranger, season oh. two. Oh, yes. Cool. You gonna make that? You gonna get all of them? No. But uh, this is coming to um, North American Shores with Power Rangers packaging uh, for about 40 bucks. And you know what? It's it's pretty pricey for for what it is. But I think if you're a Tommy fan, you're going to love it. Uh, but then the best, absolute best figure came in. And it's got to be SH Figure Arts War Machine. Because War Machine's a badass. So he's the best figure arts you I think. I think this is the best figure arts out there. Um, wow. What, just uh, like... Posability or everything. He's okay. So he's about like maybe five dollars more expensive than Tommy, but he his posability is better. He comes with uh, bullet effect parts. He comes with jet effect parts. He comes with uh, his his shoulder things pop out, and you replace replace them with missile launchers. Oh, okay. He has like uh, in the movie I think it was called the ex wife. It was like that giant bullet thing. Yeah. He has that. Uh, he has like flaps on his back to, to show for his rocket effects. Oh, I can see the flaps. And uh, he just looks beautiful. Whoa, this is pretty cool. Uh, the, the paint is sick. Uh, Iron Man's cool too, but I think War Machine is where it's at. I just like Tommy because he's very slim. Yeah, yeah. Very dainty. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, so like these two are, are pretty cool. Uh, TJ was over when, when I got... Uh, Tommy and we and we came to the conclusion that uh, Captain Marvelous is actually cooler. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah he's like me and Teacher looking at me. Teacher's like, you know what? There's something about him I just I don't like. I'm like, and then I pull up the the Gokai Red, and he's like, yeah, that is the cooler looking Sentai. Dun, and, dun, dun. and I'm like, you know what? I have to agree. And I'm like, it kind of broke our heart a little bit. Like, oh nice. man, the new kids on the block. block. I know, but but Tommy's cool, right? But yeah. Yeah, who, how could you like when he goes, Aya! Who doesn't like that? Aya! 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 He does something else, he's like, It's like, Aya! Yeah, 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 oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> he's so cool, he wears the flail and denim vest, and he has a bandana. <laughs> You're so young. Oh god, Tommy, I love you. Times. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, those are some fantastic toys. Great stuff. Um, and yeah, that, stuff, I, think that, I think that's it this week. Yeah. Uh, anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. Uh, I think we've gone on long enough. Yeah, yeah. A good hour and a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have. I don't know what we're doing next week as of right now, but next I'm sure. Week. I'm sure something will come up. Uh huh. Uh, so again, thanks for uh, listening. Mm -hmm. For myself, Laban, yeah. and Anthony. Yay! Uh, we thank you for joining us on, on this magical journey, and we will see you in seven days. See bye you. bye.